Hello everybody, this is Brother Luke, the Sin City Preacher. This is part three of my series, The Bible Says. Okay, we've established now that uh, the original sin in the garden was the sin of unbelief. Uh, Adam and Eve believed the devil they did not believe God. The question was, if you eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the tree in the middle of the garden, God says you will die that day. The devil says you will not die. So they chose to believe the devil instead of God. And that, that's the first sin uh, from humanity. And that's the sin that persists today. That's the only sin that is really uh, an issue today. Because... Uh, on the cross, Jesus died for all of our sins. The only issue now is, will you believe it or not? <laughs> um, now, they uh, when they did sin, uh, their spirit died. The, the spirit of God was withdrawn from them. So they, uh, Adam and Eve, were left with uh, functioning souls or a mind, a functioning body, but a spirit that was not function. It was inactive or severed, uh, dead spirit. Uh, and they also uh, became mortal, which means that uh, they had a sentence of death on them. They lived about 800 more years uh, physically, but it was inevitable that they would die. And so the, uh, this, the same uh, qualities have been inherited by all the descendants of Adam and Eve. Well, every one of us is born uh, dead spiritually. And, and also uh, we are uh, with the sentence of death on us. Uh, so the, there are two problems that all of us are born with that must be fixed uh, throughout the history of man. Man has tried to fix the problems through religion, but uh, religion has always failed humanity. So, but the problems are sin and death. Um, now, first let's talk about the sin problem here. Um, Man does have a dead spirit, but that does not give man an excuse. Uh, as uh, the Calvinists believe that because man is born with dead spiritually, that he's unable to um, um, exercise free will. He's unable to understand and believe and be saved. Uh, so they believe in the total inability of, of man because he has a dead spirit. But the dead spirit doesn't mean that his soul, which is his mind, his consciousness, his intellect, uh, his character, that, 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 that is not functioning. Man is still able to think and rationalize and make decisions and comprehend. Um, so the Calvinist viewpoint that man is, uh, is enabled, uh, then that, that's a, a, a horrible uh, heresy. Uh, but first, let's look at Romans 2, 14 and 15. It says, For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these, having not the law, are a law unto themselves. Um, so here Paul's talking about uh, the, the law, which, which he, he's referring to, is the, the law of Moses. Uh, the most famous, of course, are the, the Ten Commandments, where, which were written by the finger of God on stone. Uh, but then God also uh, gave a total of 613 laws, uh, which makes up all the, the laws of uh, uh, Judaism, the Mosaic laws. Those laws were given to a little uh, unique, peculiar people, the Israelites. 
those laws of Moses were never given to the world as a whole. This is one of the biggest mistakes and it leads to all kinds of error when people think that the Ten Commandments were given to everybody or the, the laws of Moses were given to everybody and that uh, uh, and even now uh, even after Christ has died for our sins and we have a church functioning church even now uh, people try to introduce the, the laws of Moses and make it part of the church. And it never was. This is talking about uh, non-Jews, which makes up probably 98% of the world's population throughout history. Uh, this is the, the law that applies to non-Jews. I'll repeat it again. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, so we don't have the law of Moses. It was not given to us, and you should not be embracing it as part of your religion. When they do by nature the things contained in the law, so we it, it's natural for us to do follow the law anyway without even knowing the law. Um, these having not the law are a law unto themselves, uh, and it continues, which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness. Uh, so the Israel, humanity as a whole was given a conscience and the law is written in their heart. Uh, but the Israelites, God went a step further and says, I'm gonna make it so clear for you. I'm gonna put it in writing. And I, I'm going to spell it out for you. I'll write it in stone. <laughs> but for the rest of us, uh, God wrote the law, the understanding, the knowledge of right and wrong uh, in our hearts as our conscience. And then the final point here is, and their thoughts demean while accusing or excusing one another. Uh, so, um, the, uh, the, the Gentiles, uh, we, we do not have an excuse uh, because we were not given the law. The law is written in our conscience. We are not give, ha, do not have an excuse uh, simply because we're, well, we were born dead spiritually, so you can't blame us. Uh, we're spiritually dead. But no, you still have a living, functioning soul uh, which uh, comprehends uh, right and wrong and has free will. So you still are without excuse. Uh, so now I want to talk about uh, the, the concept of sin and of being a sinner. But see, man, uh, we are sinners, not only because of what we do, but we are sinners because of what we are. Our nature is, is the nature of a sinner. Sin comes naturally to us. We don't have to be taught how to sin because it's the most natural thing in, in the world for, for a human. Look at Romans 3.23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All. All means every person without exception, every person ever born. Of course, the, the, Jesus Christ is a fully man, fully God, never sinned, lived a perfect sinless life, uh, he gave us an example uh, of how we should live, and he and he lived life perfectly, and his perfect life is credited to all of us who put our faith in him. Uh, so, in this case, though, the Romans 3.23 is, is saying that every person without exception uh, have sinned. We come short of the glory of God. I believe the glory of God, uh, that this is actually alluding to, is uh, the person and life, uh, an example of Jesus Christ, as I said. His, he lived a sinless, perfect life. That's the standard. That, that's what we're trying to uh, achieve through religion, but we all fall short. No one can reach the standard that Jesus set for us because the standard is perfection. <clears throat> Look at 1 John 1 8. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. 
Uh, a lot of people think that First uh, John, um, this um, portion of scripture here, uh, is um, talking about um, confessing our sins to try to re re or, uh, return to our fellowship with with God. But I totally disagree with that. I believe this portion of First John <coughs> is being addressed to the non-believers in the congregation, stating to them, look, you have to understand and admit that you are a sinner. There's no exceptions. Everybody is, is guilty. Everybody needs to be saved. Um, because there were some people who would not acknowledge that they're sinners in need of a Savior. First uh, John 1.10, if we say that we have no uh, not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Uh, so it goes on to say that if you want to go so far as to deny that you've sinned, then you actually make God a liar because God says you have sinned. God says we've all sinned. Uh, Isaiah 53, 6, all we like sheep have gone astray. Astray means uh, that's what happened in the garden. Adam and Eve went astray. They declared independence from God. They wanted to be their own gods. They wanted to learn right and wrong so they could exercise their own judgment. And so they uh, rebelled and they went astray. And we, the descendants of Adam and Eve, have followed suit. We've all gone astray. It says we have turned everyone to his own way. Almost all of humanity, the way we think is we want our own way. We want to be, we don't want to be told what to do. We don't want to be under the authority of anybody or especially uh, God that we don't even see. Uh, so um, uh, this is universal. All we like sheep have gone astray. Revelation 21, uh, 27 says, and there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. This is uh, near the end of the book of Revelation. It's talking about the eternal uh, uh, state and uh, uh, heaven, the new heavens, the new earth. And uh, that place is, is a place of perfection. And there shall be in no wise in, in no wise enter into it anything that defileth. Uh, the reason the Holy Spirit withdrew from Adam and Eve is because of sin. God withdrew and separated from, from man because of sin. And God certainly doesn't want sin reintroduced into heaven. So this is saying that no, there will be no sin allowed in heaven. So in a way we could say that heaven is a, a no sin zone, a sin free zone. <laughs> no sin allowed. Um, another way of looking at it is, uh, if if we we looked at sin as as a, a, a poisonous, uh, a noxious thing that is contagious, uh, we perhaps like a virus, a, a, a deadly harmful virus, well, if someone was carrying the virus, you cannot let them into your community. They have to be uh, separated. They have to be, uh, uh, what is it when you set people aside who have a disease? Um, but uh, th th we don't want heaven contaminated with sin. Um, someone told me once that, to use this as an example, uh, they said two people came to the gates of heaven and above the gate, the sign said, uh, no warts allowed. And they looked at each other and uh, John said to, to Paul, he says, uh, uh, Paul, you you can't get in here. You've got, you're covered with warts. And every wart is representative or symbolic of another sin. Wouldn't it be wonderful if every time people sinned, that a wart appeared on their body and there would be no way out of it, no arguing against it. Oh, I don't sin. Well, what about the wart? The wart is the indication 
that there was a sin. Uh, so John says to Paul, you're covered with warts. It's, the sign says no warts allowed. And then Paul turns to, to John and says, but, but John, you've got one wart. I can see it right there on your forehead. And, and But John says, well, it's only one wart. But Paul says, this is no warts allowed, not even one. So you can't get in either. It's a sin-free zone. Uh, so whether a person has a lots of sins uh, compared to other people, or whether a person is sinning less than your average person. It's not the number of sins, and it's not the, the quality or the type of sin that matters either. Some people want to elevate one sin as much worse than another sin, uh, but so it's not the type of sin, it's not the number of sin, it's just the fact that any sin at all excludes us from heaven, from receiving uh, eternal life. Uh, so something has to be done about this sin problem. All right, well, uh, I've had some interesting comments and uh, questions so far in this series. Uh, I look forward to more of your comments and questions. Uh, the next video I'm going to be talking about, well, how do, what's the solution to the problem? We, we've established that man is born with two problems. Uh, sin problem and the death problem. Thank you for watching. Bless you in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus.